Alright, what's up guys? Simon from BrainBiz.com and today I want to show you something that I built and you could build yourself as well. It's a 16 by 16 matrix of LEDs, 256 in total, and you can show characters, animation, whatever you want. So I saw this, I believe, three, four years ago. Somebody built one of these and he was displaying characters from uh, Retro Arcade. So I managed finally to build one and I'm going to show you guys how I did it. Um, I'm using an Arduino for this one. Most of the one I saw on the internet are using Raspberry Pis. Uh, of course, a Raspberry Pi has a lot more memory than an Arduino has, uh, but if you do little things, you can actually use part of the memory on the Arduino and store the information there. So I'll show you that when we look at the code. So right now I'm going to show you how I built this thing, then we're going to look at the code, come back, and plug it in. All right, so for the enclosure, I found this shadow box at Michael's. It's a store here in Canada, like an arts and crafts store. And it was big enough, uh, deep enough for housing all the electronics, and it came with the window and everything. Uh, then I needed to cut a matrix to isolate each LEDs. Uh, so, of course, I have a laser cutter. But if you don't, I saw that they have these um, fluorescent, like, ceiling mounted thing that is a matrix, so you could probably use that. Uh, so I cut a couple of these. And as you can see, I have three. Two are MDF to give me uh, the depth that I need. The other one is black to simulate the, uh, the pixels on the window. And this one is to set all the LEDs in, as you can see. Now I had to uh, cut each uh, strip to 16 LEDs. So I just use cutters like this and I had 16 to cut of these. And then I sanded the uh, connectors at the end because uh, sometimes there's lacquer on these, so you want to make sure you get a good connection. And uh, instead of soldering, I'm using these connectors that I bought that you just slip the uh, strip in and it makes the connection. Uh, so that made it a little bit faster to wire everything up. Uh, then I used some rubber bands on the uh, mounting plate to hold down the LEDs while I was putting them together. So I'm just fishing them through here. And then each LED fits in the holes, as you can see. And then I take the second one and go the other way and so on and so on until I reach the end. So the rubber bands helped a little bit to hold everything down. And as you can see, you can see them there. All right, so here's the plate fully uh, wired and finished. Uh, as you can see at the beginning, I was using rubber bands to hold the uh, strips down because these guys, even though they're flexible, it's very hard to have them lay flat. So that's why you see a bunch of blue tape here to hold the uh, LED strips in the right spot. Uh, I'm using these connectors instead of uh, soldering everything. So the way it works, it goes from here and then it jumps to the other one and continues in this fashion until you get to the end. Uh, to power everything, I'm using a 5 volt 10 amp uh, that's injected here. And the way it works, when I put power here, it's injecting power at the top of the chain and at the bottom of the chain. That way I don't have a big voltage drop at the end of my chain, and that could uh, cause flickering of the LEDs, especially the one at the end. And also I cut an old USB wire and used the uh, red and black uh, cable in there to actually use the same 5 volts to power everything. That way I only have to use one power supply. I could have used the DC jack, but the problem with the DC jack on the Uno, it's um, the minimum voltage required there is 7 volts. So the 5 volt couldn't power the Uno directly from here, but using the USB, that works fine. So there you go, that's the plate. Let me flip it around so you can see it. And there you go, 256 LEDs in a matrix. And that's the way it's wired up. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to go and put everything in the frame, close it up, and then we'll come back and test it out. So let's go do that. All right, one thing I forgot to mention, you have to frost the uh, the glass so that the LEDs will be diffused. So I used like Rust-Oleum frosted glass, two coats on each side, and that seemed to work. Uh, now I'm putting it all together so the, uh, the glass goes first. Uh, that glass was very sharp, so uh, I was careful on that. Little spacers before I put the grid at the beginning. And then the two MDF will go in after that to give me some clearance. As you see, the last one has a little bit uh, of screws sticking out so the big panel can be located perfectly, as you can see there. And then to make sure everything is held on together once I close it, I put some foam with some uh, hot glue uh, to uh, push everything down when I close the uh, panel itself. So I'm just putting it there to make sure I'm located properly. There we go. And then I'm closing it up. I love this box. It's very easy to work with. It was pretty cheap. It was like 25 bucks Canadian, so very good for this. And you, there you go. So now you can see the grid. 
and that's what it looks like when it's not powered on. All right, so before we look at it in action, let's see the code that makes it all work. Uh, I'm including at the beginning the fast LED library, which is used to control all these LEDs. I am also including the AVR program space because I want to be able to save the character, as you can see here, that information in flash memory. Uh, if you look at the picture here, you can see that most Arduinos don't have a lot of memory, especially SRAM, where uh, the variable and everything gets stored and modified while it's running, but it has a lot of flash memory. Now, flash memory is where the sketch is being saved, and SRAM is where all the variable manipulation is being executed. Now, the thing with flash is that once something is put in flash, it cannot be updated while the Arduino is running. Now, for my purposes, that's great because this information here, which represents one character, will not change. So I can put it in flash, and since I have more of it, I can create more of these characters. Um, so that's why this is there. Then uh, I say 256 LEDs. Do you know pin 3 is connected to the data pin of the LED strip? This is the array, the fast LED array of LEDs. And here I have my first array. So to put it in flash, I need, it needs to be a constant value, as you can see here. This is the name array, the uh, name of the array. And to put it in flash, I just do prog mem. And all this information here, 16 by 16, will be saved in flash. And uh, these codes are HTML color codes, and they represent one LED in the panel, and it will light up depending on the color code it reads. Uh, so then I have another one here for another character and so on and so on. So let's go down. Then I have the setup uh, for the library at the beginning, and I set the LED brightness to 15, which is enough for this application. And then we get to the main loop. The main loop, what it does is that it reads from the array, puts that into the fast LED array, and then displays it on the panel. Uh, the thing to uh, note here is that normally you would do uh, LEDs equal just the array. That's it, if it was saved in SRAM. But since we saved it in uh, Flash, we need to declare it this way now, as you can see. And that's all you need to do. So that tells the Arduino that get that information from Flash instead of SRAM, and then put it into the LED array. So once we have the information in, we show the LEDs, we wait half a second, we get the second frame, wait half a second, and so on and so on for each one of these. Now, if you create more, you just put more of these uh, four loops. So there you go. That's the way the code works. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload this code to the Uno. And now let's go check it out. All right. So now that we saw the code and everything, it's finally time for me to plug this in and show you how it looks. So let me do that right now. There we go. And there you are. The characters are displaying one frame at a time. It's going to do it for eight times. And then it starts to show the next array of characters. And there you go. So as you can see, the LEDs are diffused, it looks good, and it works well. And we still have a lot of memory to create more characters if I wanted to. So, so there you go, guys. That's the project. I'm very happy how this came out. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting and helpful as well. Um, if you want to replicate this or any of my tutorial, for that matter, on YouTube, I keep a website at brainybits.com where I create web pages for almost all the tutorials I do on YouTube, where I give you the code, the library used, and more information. So if you guys are interested, check that out. And uh, yeah, so that'll do it for today. Like I always say, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.